The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. Prevent seeds of resentment from entering your heart if you can. Hold your heart as the most important property you have and guard it jealously against bitterness. Try. Do well. Develop a strong, healthy heart. Yeah. Try. Do not pray for easy lives. Pray to be stronger man. Pray to be a stronger person. So this evening I will be looking at how to deal with bitterness proper. So last week we were talking about uh, prevention. But today we will be looking at how to deal with bitterness proper. But let me iterate that if it is, it is better that in the midst of offenses, you develop an attitude against contracting bitterness. Now we are going to look at how to deal with bitterness, but I still want to say that it is far better that in the midst of offenses, you develop an attitude against contracting bitterness. For the simple reason that things that finds their way or space in the heart, they are difficult to approach. Including bitterness. Now, bitterness is a, a malady that attacks the heart. Of man. I'm talking about the inner being. One's inner life. And orientation to God. From which a person does all thinking, feeling, and choosing. So bitterness affects your thinking, your feeling, and your choices. Bitterness will definitely affect your thinking. Your feeling and your choices. Trying to overcome ailments, in this case, bitterness takes time. Now you need a right diagnosis. The right medication, otherwise you can die. Now you will not recover. That is why I'm saying that try to prevent bitterness. Because some contract bitterness and they never recover. Because sometimes the cure does not even depend on you, it depends on the other person. That is why last week I tried to offer some advice to you. That prevention is better than cure. So that you can get rid of bitter spirits. Now my counsel was that one. If bitterness is a seed of resentment in the heart, then 
prevent this seed from entering your hands. Say yaudi ya wanyura ba hinta kumeni mudi ya eni abomadi na ya sa abei amen wa kumakura. Now the second was this. Develop a strong, healthy heart that cannot contract this malady. So today I will start discussing breaking free from bitterness. So we we'll soon open the heart and start the operation. But I would like to give you some anesthesia. And so me to me At least to help ease the pain from the head or heads a bit. Because you need to allow the Holy Spirit to get rid of this bitterness in your heart. See, for some the root of bitterness has gone so deep. And will take the grace of God to get rid of it. About seven, eight years ago, I was invited in to speak in one district in Accra. And then I spoke a bit from Matthew 12. About the good heart. Then I encouraged them to pray and then forgive whoever has done anything against them. Now as the Prayer time progressed. People started sobbing and weeping. But there was this lady who was making a lot of noise. So I went to her and as I tempted, I tempted to lay hands on her, she kind of flew. And the young man had to actually grab her. So I spent a lot of time trying to help her get rid of whatever was on the inside so she will be free. So service was over and I decided to go back to Koforidia. And no sooner had I entered Koforidia than I received this call. Apostle. I'm the lady you prayed for. Prayed for, I've been praying for many people. Oh no, this morning at church. So I knew who I was this talking to. I have a question. No problem. Um, um, I, would, I would like to hear it. But I was surprised what I heard. Do you want me to tell you? <laughs> Did you say, you, you have itchy. <laughs> hmm. Two weeks to her wedding day. The The friend who is supposed to be the maid of honor. Snatch the husband. Now, this young man who was going to marry her, this lady snatched. I said, what? I didn't marry it. I said, yes. I said, oh, I'm That's why I called you. I listened to your message very well. And I've decided to forgive them. But I said something when they married. I also prayed. I don't know who she prayed to. I also prayed. And I said that they will never fall pregnant. And she started serving again. For two years now, they don't have an issue. I don't know what to do. So I realized that 
she's actually forgiving them. Then I said, if you prayed that they wouldn't have a child, use the same method to reverse it. Then she started weeping. Are you there? Are you there? But she would not respond. She was weeping. Great pain in her heart. She felt that she has forgiven them. But reversing the case. What's a problem? See, a case without a cause will not happen. But things like this, if somebody opens the mouth and the fellow curses you, it will have effect. I had to encourage her. See, because the beautiful ones are not yet born. And the great men are yet on their way. So let her have that man. Let God create another one for you. When I said that, I'll pray. So, that is why I want to give some anesthesia. Sometimes the things people do to you, when they say forgive, you find it very difficult. But you need to forgive. You need to forgive. So, the first shot of the anesthesia is this. Try not to take yourself too serious. Make yourself nothing. Take a lowly view of yourself. Try in life to consider others better than yourself. That is humility. Now, when you are that type of a person, things don't easily hurt you. So, we will be going to the operation. But please, try not to take yourself too serious. See, what really holds on to bitterness and unforgiveness is self. It's self. See, Haman had a bloated image of himself. And he just couldn't stand the fact that Mordecai would not bow to him. No, he couldn't. Despite all the advantages and the privileges that the king has given him, one person not bowing to him was a problem for him. Are you here? I hope we are together. Esther chapter 5. I read from verse 9. Esther 5 from verse 9. Haman went out that day happy and in high spirit. But when he saw Mordecai the king's gate and observed that he never rose nor showed fear in his presence, he was filled with rage against Mordecai. Anna Dano Heman de Enige ne Akumapa Efredi. Na Heman Hunu Mordecai or Hine Ponkasia Numu say one sorry. Na one can hokra ne nimuno nibu fui Mordecai say. Now look at verse ten. Nevertheless, Haman restrained himself and went home. Now, restraining yourself and going home is no solution. What that means is that you are harboring some grudge, but you have just restrained yourself. Haman is like a Pentecost member. <laughs> now, Haman, see the hosso, now see Mokoi, now see the hosso, I couldn't feel no. Then, no, just say, we died in the minimum, or the hinter more, or people be aye. Calling together his friends and and Zerah, Zerah, his wife, Haman boasted to them about his vast wealth, his many sons, and all the 
and all the ways the king had honored him, and how he had ele elevated him above the other nobles and officials. And that's not all. Haman added, I'm the only person Queen Esther invited to accompany the king to the banquet she gave. And she has invited me along with the king tomorrow. And so what na Haman can say, and so on him Esther, a ma ubiara ni on hine a ma epnono a otoyano as a jimin kun ara na o chin so which ya me and ni on hine a recall ninjeno. Now pay attention to verse 13. But all this gives me no satisfaction as long as I see that that Jew Mordecai sitting at the king's gate. And so yeny na no so em mame bra mi hunu you the ni modekai no se or ti or hine prunke si yumu. His wife and all his friends said to him, Have a pole set up, reaching to a height of fifty cubits, and ask the king in the morning to have Mordecai impaled on it. And na ni yere series ne the dofono. Nina a cat train or say. No one ye do ya, the tinting ye basa fa do noon, na ochina and opa, catcher or hene, na one could send Mordecai was so. Just because the man will know bad. Nina is a uncle to no bloated image of himself. A concusemo, a one moon. Then go with the king to the banquet and enjoy yourself. This suggestion delighted him, and he had the race and he had the pole set up. Wonne on hene and co upon to honor as say a need jimu na a semino as saw him and any na on my way diano. Heman had a pole set up to hang Mordecai just because Mordecai will not bow to him. Nadia Heman a ye dwelling in an asset, no Mordecai on Cotono. If you don't take care, you'll be hung on this same pole. Say one, two, boy, sad dwee. Sometimes when you are dealing with certain people, be careful. I told you, be only you baby. Hey, yeah, they are showing who you. Some people do not respect anyone. You baby, oh ah, we move be ah. But there are certain people that when you are dealing with them, be careful. Now, so you baby, oh ah, only one yeah, they are showing you. Later on, when he started toppling before Mordecai, the wife said, "Hey, if this Mordecai is a Jew." Then there is no space for you. My husband, you are going to fall flat. And we children no bra na fe ade no ebu no so a omuni muni no na ni kire e ka kire ni se eh modekai we so one hwe ye e wono ho a hwe a na wo be hwe ase o. See some people like him and have bloated images of themselves. Ni pe bi e ti se him and de bia wo hu wo so wo chen afofro kra. And the least thing against them than against them they take offense. Draw it into their heart and keep it there. But the Master Jesus was different. Now, so Christo Yesu dear no one tis. Now Philippians two five. Philippians two five. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Who being the very nature God did not consider equality with God something to his own advantage. Now the big one, verse 7. Rather he made himself nothing. By taking the very nature of a servant and being made in human likeness, he made it was a choice. He made himself nothing. Now, when Munu Fasodia saw Nunyanko Ponseno, a mum or Tone, who empire for a quarter beer Tone Hosso, a Danese, a Unipa Sesso, now ye not ye send your ye not ye fire no woman on set Unipa. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. Now, Brian and Wasi, a year, 
city the kosi owo mu empo asenue hu na so he made himself nothing to no akasa oto no ho mpan so when men despised him he was not bothered and he said ni pe mu no hwe a en ha no Isaiah 53 verse 3 Isaiah 53 verse 3 eti adionum num enyimu mi ensa he was despised and rejected by mankind a man of suffering and familiar with pain like one from whom people hide their faces he was despised and then listening to this and we held him in low esteem the man himself he has decided to make himself nothing so if human beings hold him in low esteem he doesn't have a problem the second shot of the anesthesia is this one. Some people also don't want to forgive because they feel that what they have gone through has caused them something that seems irrecoverable. Irrecoverable. Now, a damage that appears irreparable. So they hold on to the bitterness. Ah, maybe a lost of job. Ah, Or that. What happened has caused their marriage. So they will just not forgive. I was preaching somewhere. Then I encourage the people to forgive. Then I saw this huge woman. It was a Sunday morning. She was slapping the chest in prayer she has closed the eyes and slapping the chest and the way she was doing it i was a bit afraid so i went to her and then from the back i said from behind her, I, I whispered mama what is the problem she wouldn't turn to look at me she wouldn't open the eyes she kept slapping the, the, the chest and then I, i'm sure she recognized the voice and then she said my son i'm trying to forgive but i i, I cannot i can't I'm trying but i can't See, but brothers and sisters, no matter how painful the head or how deep the root of bitterness has penetrated your heart, there are certain facts that you need to internalize today. And Now, number one, that we are born of God and our destinies are not in the hands of any human being. You can read Psalm 27. Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The, the Lord is a stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foe who will stumble and fall. Verse five. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Now, 
verses. Then my head will be exalted above my enemies. My head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hebrews 13 verse 5. Now if you can read, let's read together. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, Never will I leave you, nor forsake you. Mom Masika, a nibre, a ma, ma brabumu. Now, Mom Penidia, Mosso, if it's on Nora, I can say, Mary Nyawa, Nanso, Mary Powder. Now, it says, because God has said, John Semmel said, if he said, when Yamina can say, Never will I leave you, nor will I forsake you. Mary Nyawa. Now, Miriam Powder. And now, verse 6, the big one. If, if God has said, Never will I leave you nor forsake you. Look at verses. So we say with confidence, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Now, a mark, you're the numb, I can say, a radin, me boy for minstro, or nipa bit to me, I am a dean. Please. Let go of the bitterness. Take this one into your spirit. Forgiveness, like repentance, always brings with it times of refreshing. Now it is a game changer. You may not recover all you have lost. Like maybe an image, job, opportunity, but forgiveness in and of itself frees your spirit, man. As chapter 3, verse 19. Are we together? Let the sun set you free and be free. Okay. Repent then, if you like, forgive them, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, and that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Will not come from the east or from the west, from the Lord. Times of refreshing will come from the Lord. <laughs> If bitterness is an invitation to the devil, then forgiveness is an invitation to the Almighty God. Say Repentance will always draw God closer to you. And when God shows up, the story will be different. When God shows up, the story will change. I like some 124. David begins with the word if. David, or shall say no, or say he brings say, an if clause. Because he says that if the Lord had not been on our side, or say, say, and yeah. If the Lord had not showed up, but when God shows up, things will change. Verse 8 says that our help. Is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Then verse 7 says that we have escaped like a bird from the foulest snare. The snare has been broken and we have escaped. All because God has showed up on the horizon. Now verse 6 says that 
Praise be to the Lord who has not let us be torn by their teeth. Repentance, forgiveness will bring God into the equation. So I will end this evening's broadcast by giving four ways people tend to deal with bitterness. So I could only talk about the anesthesia. Number one. When people are bitter, some of them want to express it. Number two, some repress it. Number three, some suppress it. Number four, and the most important, they confess it. I have not listed them in any particular order in terms of progression. I will in this teaching go through the first three quickly. And I will dwell extensively on the last. Confession. May the Lord be with us. And may he prepare our hearts against the episodes that we have ahead of us. Make time with us. Join us in this broadcast on Sunday. And may the Lord grant us the opportunity to meet you. So that we will take one by one what we have just outlined. Dealing with bitterness proper. But I wouldn't want to end this broadcast without giving you the opportunity to give your life to Jesus. He is a savior of the world. God sent his son into this world not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now if, if you want to give your life to Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer after me. Dear Lord, Today I accept Jesus as my Savior. Forgive me of all my sins and be my Lord forever. If you have prayed this prayer sincerely, you are born again. The Lord is the Lord of your, over your life. Your name is firmly written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Join the Church of Pentecost. Or any Bible believing church close by. So that it will help you grow in the Lord. May the Lord bless every one of us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.